Dennis, in seeking the fundamental substance of reality, perhaps the most important development is the creation, emergence, development of complexity. We all know the early universe was very similar, homogenous. And then after billions of years, 10 billion now, 13.7 billion years, we have an extremely complicated world. The physicists talk about the long action of gravity and bringing things together and self-organizing complexity. But it is only in biological systems that we see the incredible diversity that has occurred on Earth, maybe other places, but certainly on Earth. How does complexity occur in biological systems? Well, to really answer that question, you have to go back to the origins of life, which is not my particular area of expertise, but I, I certainly work in the immune system, and the immune system is a very, very complex system, without a doubt. So this is the system, of course, that protects our bodies against viruses and bacteria and all the other horrible things that are trying to kill us every day. And the immune system is built up in, in layers, as it were, by different types of cells. The T cells, the white blood cells that defend us against viruses, and the B cells, the ones that make antibodies, natural killer cells that are the ones that swing into action as soon as we get invaded by some horrible bacteria or something. And all of these have to coordinate with each other, and they're talking to each other all the time through messengers. They have messengers, not in the same way as neurons in the brain, but by giving each other chemical messengers that actually tell each other what to do. And so there's an enormous amount of information flow going on in the immune system, and it's very highly coordinated. And, and it's an amazingly complex system. I'm always amazed it works as well as it does, actually. And of course, occasionally it goes wrong and you get autoimmune diseases and so forth. But most of the time, it works very, very well indeed. And how does complexity um, uh, uh, work to create this system? What are the, the elements that fit together? Well, you've got all kinds of layers here. You've got the genes, obviously. You've got the genome, which has got to encode the proteins that will actually give you all the signaling pathways and give you the cells that will then be able to coordinate together. So it's probably best to think of it as a kind of uh, cube or cake, if you like, with many slices. And so you've got the genetic cake, slice of the cake. Um, you've got then the, the protein slice of the cake. You've got the proteins building up into signaling pathways inside the cells. You've got the cells themselves. Um, and then you've got the actual system operating together um, as a system where you really need computer modeling to actually see what's going on. Now, nobody can say that any one layer is the layer that matters. You know, you can't say that. It's like with arrows between all the layers. You can have bottom-down causation from the top layer. Hmm. You can have bottom-up causation, top-down, sorry, top-down causation from the top layer, and you can have bottom-up causation from the bottom layer. And those are all talking to each other. So the way the system is built up is, is sort of top-down and bottom-up. That's the fascinating thing about it. And, and is that occurring uh, simultaneously? It's all at the same time. I mean, we only talk about top-down and bottom-up because that's the way we tend to approach the system to understand it. In reality, it's one system that's working as a complete complex system all the time, all in our bodies every day. Otherwise, we'd be dead. <laughs> but, you know, that, that, that's the complexity of it. How did this evolve this way? Well, we know quite a bit about the evolution of the immune system. Um, there's lots we don't know as well. And what's really fascinating is that we vertebrates, we have two types of immune system. We have what's called innate immunity, which is what kicks into action in the first few minutes and hours after you get invaded by some bacteria. And then we have our acquired immune system, and that takes days, even a week, to kind of clock in. And that's when, if you get flu, you know, your, your lymph nodes kind of swell up here, your lymph glands. <laughs> that's the acquired immune system uh, coming into action where your T cells are multiplying and they're beginning to mobilize and, and mount an immune response. So that's what we have as vertebrates. But invertebrates just have the innate immunity. Mm -hmm. And that's enough, actually, for them to, uh, to get going quite well. And a lot of the proteins that are used in our immune system, especially in our innate immune system, we can find way back in, in invertebrate uh, evolution as well. Lots of them are there. The toll receptors, the family of toll receptors that recognize different kinds of bacteria and that swing into action very, very early on 
during the uh, innate immune response. Those we find in Drosophila, you know, the, the little fruit fly, which geneticists like working yeah. on, and in lots of other um, species as well. So, so you so. can trace elements of, the, of our immune system back to lower animals. Absolutely. And yes. see how the, yeah. the, they mm -hmm. flow together to, to create what, what we have today. I mean, evolution, I always say, I mean, I have Scottish blood, so I can say this, but, you know, if you're Scottish, don't throw something away, you know. <laughs> so when evolution comes up with good tricks and proteins that do useful things, generally, you know, it tries to keep those genes on board, um, if possible, because they have some selective advantage for the organism. And so a particular gene that has a selective advantage at an earlier stage of evolution, that's around to be used for other uses as well later on in evolution. And very often that's how evolution works, you know, by by using different proteins in different contexts. They're there available to be used, as it were, to build up a new system. And so biological complexity comes about by increments, incremental building up. And in physics, we know overall there's the second law of thermodynamics, so everything is getting going towards disorder. But we have these pockets of increasing complexity and increasing order. And biological systems in general, and the immune system in particular, mm -hmm. is an example of this. And it's just mm -hmm. fascinating to see it literally in operation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Of course, it's all being driven by energy from the sun, yeah, sure. mean, as we all know, at the end of the day. But <laughs> So all of the energy from the sun is sort of driving all this informational complexity up and up. Um, so it doesn't disobey the second law of thermodynamics, sure. as some people have suggested. <laughs> That's not at all the case. Yeah. Um, but it is fascinating the way that new information can come about by this amazing process of throwing the dice of genetic diversity and of a, allowing that diversity to then be acted upon by natural selection. Every time I hear about such a beautiful system like the immune system in biology, I immediately think back to the early universe and the almost absolute homogeneity. And if you looked at that, you would think there's never any possibility of such a system of minute complexity emerging. Mm -hmm. When you see that so fine-grained as a biologist, do you ever step back and, and kind of wonder about what this says on a meta level? Hmm. Well, I do, actually. I mean, you're absolutely right. And I think the reason is that partly, you know, biology is going through a very messy phase at the moment in some ways, or it has been in the past decade, because we've got the sequencing of the human genome. We've got a lot more complexity has come on board. But actually, as you do that, certain simplifying principles begin to emerge. Mm. There are only a few structures, relatively few, for proteins. There's only a certain number of ways of making an organism. Um, it may turn out in genomics, there are only a certain number of ways to make a functioning genome, actually. We don't know that yet. But it's interesting how out of the complexity is coming certain simplifying principles. And I think that's the way that biology will continue to develop. And I personally think that points to some great elegant simplifying principles uh, in the reality of matter itself, which, of course, when it comes to physics and chemistry, looks a much simpler story than yeah. biology does. But it may be that biology, you know, as life goes on, as we learn more about biological systems, it's going to point us more and more back to a kind of unifying principle, certain perhaps very few unifying principles that underlie that biology. And I have to say, you know, as someone who, who believes in a god who has actually brought everything into being, um, in a way, that's not surprising. You know, there are certain elegant principles here that actually underlie the whole narrative that we look at as biologists and physicists and chemists. However you ascribe the reason, what is clear is that such complexity from simple principles yield an unbelievable diversity in terms of the, just the different species that are on Earth, millions of different kinds of of creatures of all kinds, of which we're just one. Absolutely, and it's amazing to think that more than 99% of all the species that ever lived have died. We, we don't even know about them except from fossils and so forth. So, so it's an absolute riot. I always think of, of God as the artist, as someone, you know, the painter with a palette in the studio with lots of paint all over the floor and mess <laughs> and stuff going on, and yet huge diversity coming out of that, you know. So I, some people think of God as a kind of engineer, and I. I personally don't. I think that's a very unsatisfactory way of thinking of, of God. I, I think of God as, as an artist, as a musician, as someone who's creating a huge amount of diversity, but using f just a few unifying principles 
that actually when it comes back to it are probably relatively simple. So we get diversity out of simplicity. 